starts recording. So um, it's Wednesday the 21st of April 2010 and over the next few minutes you'll be watching interviews between all the politicians standing for the opportunity to be elected to become a Member of Parliament for the residents of Leicester West. So could you introduce yourself please? My name's Liz Kendall and I'm Labour's candidate for Leicester West. Okay. So let's start by looking at things on a large scale. Could you briefly explain what the Robin Hood tax is? The Robin Hood tax is a tax on financial uh, transactions. So our banks are global and they do deals across the world. And this would be a tax on those transactions. And in order to get it, you need lots of countries to sign up because banks don't just work in one country. Okay, so would you support the introduction of the Robin Hood tax? Absolutely, and Gordon Brown, who's currently the Prime Minister, is one of the people who's leading those calls nationally. And what would you use the revenue that would be raised through the Robin Hood tax for? I'd invest it for public services. I think that early years services and care for our elderly population are really important priorities. We want to have people have care from cradle to grave, so that would be my priority. So, um, do you know what the population of your cons potential constituency is in Leicester West at all? I think it's about, about 100,000. I mean, we have quite a, you know, our po population comes and goes, it can be quite transient, but I think it's around 100,000. And interestingly, only 68,000 people in Leicester West are, who are eligible to vote are registered to vote. Um, do you know what the unemployment rate in Leicester West it was in 2009? In 2009, I think it was around 14%. Mm -hmm. And do you know what the national average unemployment rate was and how this compares to the rate for Leicester West? I think it was less than that, um, probably around 8%. So do you think that some people could use the internet to increase their chances of finding employment? They can if they have access to the internet. Um, and if they don't have access to the internet, they should come somewhere like this, the New Parks Library on Aikman Avenue, which has got computers that are open for everybody to use, and it's just open today. Okay, so do you know how many people in the Leicester West don't have access to internet at home? I don't know um, the exact numbers. It's probably between 20 and 25%. And I should say, one of uh, Labour's commitments in its manifesto is to guarantee fast broadband access to the internet for every household. And that's something I think is very important. So do you know how, what, how access compares to the national average with people in Leicester West compared to a Honestly, national scale? Honestly, Lucy, I don't. What's okay. the figure? Okay, so people on a national scale have slightly high levels of access. Oh, okay. So in Leicester West, it would be about 25% people have had problems. And on a national scale, it's about 33% of people have problems with internet access at home. Okay. Um, so well, We need to do more. Yeah. And that's, as I said, uh, why we've got that commitment, to bring broadband access to every home. But in the meanwhile, you can also use services in your libraries, which are a great thing that the uh, Labour Council uh, has, been, has been pressing in this area. Okay, um, so it leads me on to my next question. Do you know the percentage of your potential constituency that don't have any qualifications? I don't, actually, uh, Lucy. I, I imagine that we have uh, quite a lot of young people here who may not either have good GCSE results or an access to, to MVQs or training qualifications. Um, I know that that's a real issue, but I don't know the exact percentage. Okay, so I think it's just below 40% for Leicester West, and the national average is a lot lower at 16.4%. So how would you seek to improve the education of your um, people in Leicester West? Well, education is an absolute priority for me here. Um, I think we have seen improvements in our schools. We're doing great things on primary school maths and English results, and our school, secondary schools GCSE results are now improving faster than the national average. But I want to see good schools in every part of this community, and Labour is also guaranteeing that every 16 and 17 year old will have an educational training place up to the age of 18. And if you're a young person who's been unemployed for more than six months, you'll either get an education job or training place. And that's a really firm commitment that we're going to be paying for by a one-off tax on bankers' bonuses. Okay, so staying with the theme of ed education, do you support the um, 
application of top-up fees or tuition fees for people at university? Do you know, I was really uh, worried about them when they were first introduced because I thought that they would put off uh, kids from who uh, lower income families. But actually, all of the evidence suggests that hasn't been the case. In fact, we've got slightly more kids from uh, poorer backgrounds going to university now. Now, I don't want to see people bur burdened with a large debt but we, we've got to find some way of paying for education from the very early years up till university. So I want more university access for people, but I think if you were going to ask me where my priority would be for public spending in future, it would be the very, very early years. Because if you can get to help kids early on in life, that sets them up for later on in life. OK. Oh dear. <laughs> Straight into there. Uh, well, it's actually an ambulance. Fingers okay. crossed that's not anything serious. Okay so on to the money side of things and how would you choose to spend it in your election campaign? Um, in the year in the last general election the Leicester West branch of a certain political party received £22,500 in donation above its normal average of about £2,000 per year. Um, this year certain groups only have £1,000 to spend on a single candidate. What do you think is the right amount to spend on a candidate and what's your favourite method of communicating with your constituents? I think we, you know, I get a lot of small donations of 10, 15, 20 pounds just from, you know, ordinary Labour Party <laughs> members or people who, who aren't members but support me. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, whilst absolutely social media, blogging, the internet is very important, for me, the best thing is going out, knocking on people's doors and meeting people, sending letters, sending leaflets. So if I had a thousand pounds, I'd probably spend it on a leaflet which sets out my positive vision for Leicester West, building on Labour's record so far, and then we just get out and pound the streets and deliver it. Um, do you have any other roles that ensure you have direct contact with members of your community? I do all sorts of things that, you know, I come to events like this, which is the opening of the New Parks Library, uh, to meet people who are kind of come in and use these facilities. Uh, I visit all sorts of voluntary groups, I visit businesses, and mostly I just get out and about, knock on doors, and I go to school gates, because you see a lot of parents there who might be too busy to talk to you otherwise, so it's pretty simple really. Thank you. And do you think that age adds experience that is essential to a Member of Parliament? Well, I think we want to see politicians of all ages and all experiences. I think it's important that younger people see people in politics who they feel that they can relate to. Um, but I do think, I mean, I'm 38 now. Um, I feel this is the right age for me to stand rather than any younger because I have got more experience. I've done more things. Uh, I've run a couple of national charities, um, I've worked already in Parliament and in Government and I think if I hadn't done that I wouldn't have been as well prepared as I am now. But if you get, uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having older candidates, absolutely not. Um, we need older people to be represented as well and we need experience but sometimes you can get set in your ways and I hope I'm still someone who's got strong opinions but is also open minded. Okay. I hope. Thank you. Um, what do you think is more essential in controlling crime? More police officers walk in the streets or the use of more technology, such as a, a DNA database, for example? You know, I, I think you need a combination of things. Um, you need uh, police officers and uh, community support officers out there. You need CCTV. That can be very good. But also, I want to look at how we get... Uh, more, we look at the sort of causes of crime and how one of the big issues here is antisocial behaviour and actually I think we need to find more things for young people to do particularly in the evenings and at weekends uh, so they don't get bored they're not out and about on the streets so I think it's a combination of those different things I wouldn't say any one of those in particular is more important okay and slightly off the ball question here are you a supporter of capital punishment no, absolutely not. Okay. No. And do you think that an immigrant population can contribute towards a stable population, a stable economy? Yes, I do. I think that immigration has brought real benefits to this city and to our country as a whole. But I also know that people have uh, concerns about immigration 
uh, that we need to look at and I think we need a system that's firm but fair, that 